Okay, guys, um, I'm here for week 120 of the DVD Fiends, and today I will be talking about Ilsa, Harem Keeper of the Oil Sheiks, and, um, this is the first official sequel of the Ilsa series. Um, before this, I think, was Jess Franco's Ilsa, the Wicked Warden, and then there was, uh, Tigress of Siberia, and then there was one unofficial, I think it's unofficial, I haven't seen any release except for one VHS tape, which pops up on eBay every now and then, which is... Uh, Ilsa, the Absolute Power, and I have no idea what that is. It could be a documentary, it could be just a fan film, for all I know, but, um, who cares? Today I'll just be talking about the Harem Keeper of the Ola Sheiks. So, uh, this one doesn't exactly pick off where it pick up that. Ugh, doesn't exactly pick up where the last one left off. This one is, um, this one starts off as she's a, uh, she works for an Arab sheik and helps import and maintain sex slaves that uh, are for him. Um, leaves one big unanswered question after the first one, how the hell did she escape? Uh, spoiler alert, um, at the end of the first Ilsa She-Wolf, or the first Ilsa movie, She-Wolf of the SS, um, she's left tied to a bed as her main captor that she likes to have fun torturing. Um, is about to kill her, but passes out as she's about to stab Ilsa. Um, so we're kind of left on a cliffhanger. So I guess maybe it's... Maybe they explain it in a Wicked Warden. I don't know. Uh, this one just starts off, and she's uh, a keeper of sex slaves for an Arab sheik. Did I just... Did I already say the plot? I don't know. I don't really care. Um, I didn't really prepare this much. I've just been going off with uh, what I've... What I've kind of mentally kept in a... You know, I'm gonna stop talking and making myself sound like an idiot, so... Anyway, um... The movie is just generally pretty crappy. Uh, the first... I know you don't go to these movies to get a good story. Um, you're coming here for exploitation. It's an exploitation movie. You're coming here to see tits and blood, but... There still is... There still should be a coherent story. I mean, that's one of the things that made the first episode so great. There were, um, of course it was padded with sex and violence throughout the entire thing. Uh, you had somebody being whipped over here, you had somebody showing their tits over there. But, um, there were still multiple stories, which was what carried the movie. Um, it wasn't just Ilsa torturing people, it wasn't just her experiments throughout the movie. You had, uh, the escape plot, you had the affair between, um, uh, one of the captives in the camp, and, excuse me, and, um, Ilsa, and then you had the whole experiment plot, and her enjoying torturing, really, really having fun torturing one of um, the captives, trying to prove that women uh, can withstand pain, withstand, withstand pain more than uh, men can. So you had a lot going on in that movie, and that was one of the things that carried the movie. This doesn't really have anything. I I finished this in two sittings mainly because. It's just too much. Uh, it didn't bother me, it's just that it gets boring after a while. And once you see the same thing happen over and over again, the same women being tortured, it just, it's just not entertaining. Um, let's see where we're gonna go with this. Uh, there is more to the story, but it really doesn't matter, and I honestly forget exactly why um, two of the main characters visit uh, the Arab Sheik, um, in the first place. I can't remember, they were from, I think they were from America, planning some, I don't know, and it really isn't essential to the story at all. All I know is that during the last 30 minutes, they make a very half-assed attempt, kind of like my half-assed attempt at this review, um, to create another love story with, um, Ilsa, like in the first one. It's pretty much just mimicking the first one, which is, I always hate seeing in sequels. Um, but, uh, one of the things that also pissed me off is that they really try to make you feel sympathy for Ilsa, which is completely absurd. Um, they really try to make you feel bad and make you feel like, I can't, I, well, I guess I couldn't tell exactly what they were trying to do. Um, everybody, everybody in this, um, movie is kind of a scumbag. Um, you can never really tell what their true intentions are, and they're really uninteresting. There's only one interesting character, and it's, there are two Americans that come to, um, the Sheik, to the, wherever the hell they're located, um, some that come to the Middle East, um, 
sorry, I'm trying to sort this out. I didn't come prepared to this review, but um, one of them uh, is a very quirky character. Um, very interesting character, and is actually the only comic relief in the entire movie. And there's a scene where, um, while Ilsa is having sex with uh, the other guy, the fucking male model guy, uh, this guy is at, back at his bed, and there's a whole scene where um, uh, he sends a sex slave, and it's a guy, and um, there's this whole awkward scene that's kind of funny, but it's really the only, really the most entertaining part of the movie. Um, this movie's generally just very dull. Um, but during the last 30 minutes, you try to feel sympathy. They try to make you feel sympathy for Ilsa in some way, which is kind of stupid. Uh, I'm not going to feel sympathy for somebody who, 10 minutes prior, killed a girl with an exploding dildo. Um, no, that just doesn't work. Uh, the movie just... I guess it's entertaining. Um, I just say stick with the first one unless you find this really cheap, because I mean, I guess it is worth picking up just to complete the collection, or if you really want to watch a movie similar to Ilsa, but not exactly the same movie. Um, I don't know. The movie's just kind of shitty. Uh, yeah, that's my review. Um, I'm sure I've embarrassed myself enough for today. Alrighty. Bye, everybody.